uh, thank you for inviting me here. So I've been asked to talk about a very difficult topic uh, or a very easy topic, the way you look at it, uh, building emotional appeal through brands. Uh, and essentially the brief was that is emotional appeal better or is a functional appeal better when you build a brand? Uh, and I thought, and I was told that, you know, take 10, 15 minutes, not more than that. Uh, and I realized that if I actually start to talk about the science of uh, building emotional uh, connect, it will take uh, hours and it can be very boring for us. So, you know, one of the things that I've done is I've actually pulled out two examples, my personal examples of brands that I was privileged to have been a part of uh, and, and share how some of the amazing emotional connects were built uh, on those brands. So, you know, first a few facts and I'm sure all the marketers in the room and I'm actually told that these are mostly the winners of uh, the IMA awards. Uh, so, uh, of course, I'm assuming these are the exceptional marketers uh, of India sitting here. Uh, so, you know, in terms of the numbers, when you talk about emotional versus functional, uh, this is one of the research reports uh, that we came across, which essentially says that emotional advertising is two times more effective than functional advertising. Yeah, very simple, basic statement. Uh, it also says that this survey was done across almost 1,000 plus companies, uh, out of which 31% actually said that, you know, we have seen significant profits happen uh, when we actually went for an emotional conversation with the consumers. Uh, and 16% said that we actually saw profits when we went for a functional communication with consumers. And then in the middle you see 26% who said both work. My view uh, is that you actually need a perfect mix of both. Uh, and you know, when you're trying to do a pincer attack on a large brand, or you're trying to build up quick salience uh, for an unknown brand, functional communication of course works better. But if you're trying to build a very long, sustained consumer love, you have no option but to actually go for uh, emotional messaging. And let me share some very interesting examples with you. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen communication from Surf Excel. Okay, no one. Wow, awesome. And I was worrying that, you know, people would have seen it and this would be like, yeah, yeah we know it, you know, add some value to us. So, uh, you know, I, I worked on Surf Excel sometime in 2010, 11, 12, uh, when I was in Unilever. And, you know, one funny fact, that starting from 2008 to probably 2019, multiple marketing teams have worked on Surf Excel. And with the external world, all of them claim that they are the reason why this amazing campaign was launched. Let me tell you, this was actually a global campaign. And we just did an Indian uh, rendition. But let me just play the film for you before I start to talk about it. Can you play the film, please? दाग लगने से अगर कुछ अच्छा होता है तो दाग अच्छे है ना सर्फ एक्सेल दाग अच्छे है वापस नहीं करना so if this communication doesn't bring a smile on your face, there's something seriously wrong with you. Yeah, that's the power of the communication that was launched. And, you know, come to think of it, if you remove yourself from this communication, this is essentially a laundry powder brand, right? Which is trying to build a consumer connect and consumer love through emotional communication. Let me also tell you the other fact, by the way, an interesting fact. There was a, another market leader, large brand, I can't name him for obvious reasons, who was spending as much money as Surf Excel was in communication and they were going hardcore functional, talking about Ziddi Dag and talking about bringing in all kinds of celebrities. Uh, despite spending equal amount of money as Surf Excel, they had half the share and half the growth rates uh, for the brand. The insight that led to this was very simple. All parents across the world want their kids to become perfect beings. And for that, one of the big requirements is that, uh, you know, the kid should imbibe perfect values as a child. And the best way to imbibe values is by doing what this guy did, love for his sister, love for, uh, respect for your elders, etc., etc. And while trying to deliver those values, uh, if you get dirty, don't worry, Surf Excel will take care of it. So Surf Excel, daag achhe hain. Yeah? Uh, and you know, when you, when you actually think about it, I think the, the brand would not have been where it is if actually someone globally hadn't thought about this campaign. They said avatars across the world, different countries, different interpretation of values, worked equally brilliantly across 
continues to work for almost 13, 14 years. Yeah. So I find this one of the super inspirational, uh, emotional appeal brands that I've seen uh, in my journey of uh, almost 18, 20 years um, so far. Next slide, please. Now let me talk about another very interesting brand. I don't know how many of you in this room are ex-smokers, current smokers, or have loved ones who are smokers. Raise your hands. See, so we see some 15% people raising their hands. I can assure you the number actually is 50%, but the rest of them are lying. Yeah, now that's the challenge of this brand. So what this brand is supposed to do is to convince a smoker to quit smoking. How difficult can it get? Number two, on top of it, for a smoker who is willing to quit, this brand then actually has to go and convince uh, this consumer that use me, leverage Nicotex as a brand as in your quitting journey. So hellish task. Now we've actually been doing PhD on this brand for the last six, seven years. By the way, many international brands came into the market, struggled, went away. This brand is almost 97 share player in the market. The lone warrior over the last seven years trying to convince smokers to quit. And we, we feel uh, elated with the fact that we've almost convinced a crore plus smokers uh, to quit smoking so far in this journey. Now, you know, when we were trying to communicate this brand, now put yourself in the shoes of the marketer who's trying to do it. So there are these functional triggers, barriers that you see, and there are these emotional triggers, barriers that you see, right? So there are these functional triggers uh, or barriers rather. First would be a consumer will always challenge the efficacy of a product like that. Uh, number two, taste. You know, there are certain substances that need to be used to get a smoker to quit. Doesn't always taste great. Usage. Uh, the consumer will always have that complexity and confusion of saying, should I, how do I use this brand, etc. On the emotional side, again, you have both triggers and barriers. There's a big barrier, quitting belief. If I choose to quit, well, I'll do it myself. I don't need help. Second, on advocacy front, a big trigger. Uh, you know, if my friends and family tell me uh, that this is a great brand to use, uh, I would end up doing that. So we played this game over the last, um, you know, six odd years. Multiple campaigns, six years, uh, happy family, advocacy, dosage, myth buster, and we have three functional and two, uh, you know, uh, emotional ones. Let me play the, uh, can you play the advocacy one, please? Can you click on that? So let me show you an emotional communication that works. <laughs> There's something wrong with the audio. He's not supposed to be so sad. Nicotex nicotine gum. Bara hafto me cigarette chodne me madad kar. Nicotex. It works. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and in this journey, again, we went to the consumers and asked them saying, uh, you know, uh, why are you not buying Nicotex? Why are you not quitting? And one of the things, couple of insights that obviously, you know, um, uh, came to us. One was, of course, that a smoker believes that you don't understand my world. Uh, so, you know, every time you're speaking with me, you're being condescending. Uh, the other insight was that they will try, they will fail, they'll try again. So it's okay to fail. Let's together be in that journey. And a couple of these insights were then weaved into the creative that we will play now, uh, which essentially completely altered the trajectory of the brand, giving us some of the best growth rates that we have seen uh, over the last six, seven years. Let me play that for you. Korn manega, jo das saal se cigarette pi raha hai, wo bina cigarette ke reh paega. सा करेगा कोई जब सात बार छोड़ने के बाद आठवीं बार फिर ट्राई करोगे कौन यकीन करेगा कि आप स्मोकिंग से दूर रह सकते हो उससे रिश्ता तोड़ सकते हो कौन बिलीव करेगा कि ऐसी शाम पे खुद को रोक पाओगे लाख कोशिशों और हजार फेलियर्स के बाद कौन मानेगा ऐसे में जब खुद को अकेला पाओ तो बस साथ रखना थोड़ा यकीन यकीन ही है जो आदत से आजादी का रास्ता है ये एक दिन में नहीं होगा मगर एक दिन जरूर होगा हमें यकीन है आप पे 
निकोटिक्स या सो एक दिन में नहीं होगा लेकिन एक दिन जरूर होगा हमें यकीन है आप पे वी बिलीव यू कैन एंड यू नो दिस अगेन हैड वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग इमोशनल हुक्स एंडेड अप गिविंग अस ग्रेट रिटर्न्स एंड हेंस यू नो इन अ नटशेल ऑन दिस ब्रांड एट लीस्ट यू सी द जर्नी टू फंक्शनल कम्युनिकेशन एंड थ्री इमोशनल कम्युनिकेशन एंड द इमोशनल कम्युनिकेशन ऑफ कोर्स वर्क वंडर्स फॉर द ब्रांड सो यू नो दोज वर द टू एग्जाम्पल्स आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर इफ यू आर ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड ब्रांड्स दैट last more than your lifetime uh, if you're trying to build strong moats of brands where as the brand gets bigger irrespective of who comes around your brand continues to uh, survive and thrive if you're trying to build strong moats uh, around your brand go for emotional hooks and emotional communication having said that at times you do need functional um, communication as well so make the most of those yeah that's it from my side thank you